I wanted to talk about today's National Signing Day and something that, you know, a lot of uh, fans I know of our fan base have been talking about, and that's NIL. And uh, I brought it up before, and we talked about it in the past. And, you know, I just wonder if we're getting to the point, if we're just going to go ahead and pay the players. You know, I mean, everybody wants to say that, you know, it has said for years that with all the money that the players bring in, with all the money that the coaches make, why don't we do that? But I think that all those people always said that but they never had a plan on how to go about doing it and how it would be regulated. Yeah. It's like a lot of, a lot of people say things in this world that sound good, but they never come up with a plan on how to go about doing it. Yes. And then once it becomes a reality and then it becomes not what you thought it was going to be. none of those people have any answers at that point. Do they Mark? I just I was just wondering what your, your, your thoughts are. So when you talk about paying the players, you mean that the some collection of NCAA conferences, schools would get together to determine what revenue looks like and what percentage they should receive. And then it comes directly from the school. Again, school conference, NCAA to some degree. And there's your game check that comes each and every week. Right. I mean, I, I think that's, I mean, what a lot of people have done for years have advocated for that. I mean, if that is, have you not heard that from at least certain circles? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm yeah. just trying to work through some of the things you're talking about, that things sound good. Right. But what, how is this going to play out in real life? And what road are we going down? So, you know, we can pick them off one by one. The first one being equity. So do you come up with some kind of sliding scale to evaluate these players and their worth and their value? Does Bryce Young get paid a lot more than the long snapper or does everybody make $50,000? Right, right. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody got out in front on this. And I believe that the strongest backers of NIL were the ones that were advocating that the players do get some form of compensation to begin with. I mean, if you ask for the strongest supporters of NIL, if you ask them if you had your way, would you just go ahead and pay, pay the players? Most of those folks would say, yeah, yeah I would just go ahead and pay the players. Sure. So, I was a backer of NIL for the simple reason that they're Americans. Right. Therefore, since they're Americans, why are they not free to earn money outside? So it's related to what they do and why they have received this fame, but it's not supposed to be a direct a direct line of payment because of your work. It's that if said company came to me and said, Mark, we like what you do here, da 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 da, da and we're going to pay you. We want you to post three times a day on Instagram, and here's X number of dollars. Well, that is me benefiting from whatever brand I have here. Yeah, the, the one thing that I wonder, okay. Mark, though, if you know, we go about doing this and we and we pay the players, do you play college football anymore, and are these student athletes anymore? Yeah, that's what I don't like about it. I don't believe that they are. I mean, you're you're no longer the voice of college football. You're the voice of uh, what semi pro football, you know, yeah. or minor league pro football. Yeah, it's almost just a uh, it's just an attachment to the university that they happen to be. You know, we'll use our school, Ohio State football players. They just happen to play at a stadium that's on campus and has the name on the jersey and the colors that we've always identified, but they no longer need to go to class and and be eligible uh, based on class attendance and grades and so forth. And Right, because if you think about it, we've already gone this way in, in some ways. We expanded the playoff, much like the NFL did. We gave you a transfer portal, which is much like free agency, which is the NFL has. So... 
I mean, are there lines anymore? Because the lines used to be blurred. I don't think they're blurred anymore. No, they're not blurred. But what what concerns me? Well, what concerns me is the unknown. So the the unknown problems that nobody is thinking of. But what could also be alarming is that if we're going to pay these players and right now nil is out of control well nil is still a component of this so i don't know that that's magically going to go away that just because you're paying a player and i don't even know what amount of money to throw out that would be reasonable once it gets divided among 105 players or 85 scholarship players what are they each going to make a hundred thousand dollars for a football season. If they're making a hundred thousand dollars, how much is that times 85? That's eight and a half million dollars. Right. Right. Well, I mean, initially, yeah, I just wanted to say also real quick, Mark, initially what I thought, and I think this is the issue that most people have talked about is nobody ever thought it was going to be used as an inducement to come to the school. Exactly. It's not a lot of people. Right. And there's our issue. Everybody yes. thought it was just going to be used as you get on campus and XYZ car dealership wants you to advertise for them. Guess what? You will get paid for, for doing advertisements for XYZ uh, you know, car dealership. Yes. You want to know what the problem is? We don't have a governing body in our sport, and we never have. The NCAA has become what the NCAA is, which and we found this out a couple of years ago during COVID, if we want to be perfectly honest. You know, it was pretty much left up to uh, the presidents of the schools. And, you know, you could say maybe the commissioners of uh, each conference, but the, the commissioners of the conference are pretty much abiding by what the, you know, the presidents and the athletic directors want to do. Absolutely, David. And we've had this conversation, and I've made this statement a zillion times since mid-2020, and that was, this pandemic is the great revealer of who owns the power and who drives college football. Yep. yep. Absolutely. It also yeah. gave us an insight into how these conferences view football and its importance, and if there's a disconnect within the conference. And I think that disconnect was more so in the big 10 than any other conference, but back to the NIL business. Yeah. Huh. Yes. It's not supposed to be an inducement. I, I think back to the whole Johnny Manziel situation. And that's the first point I ever made about NIL. I don't even know if I called it that maybe I did, but posted a video to basically say, okay, this is going to be coming at some point. I don't know if it's a year from now or 10 years from now, but this is coming. So let's get a handle on this and figure out exactly what this is. But I do believe that a Johnny Manziel should be able to sign autographs and people want to pay money for it. He should be able to keep the money. Right. Right. No, I, and, and I, and I get the point on that, but you know, it's back to the thing of what does the plan look like? And then how is it? What are the safeguards? What are the regulations when it comes to it? And I mean, those are just my thoughts. 